What's up, Overwatch community? My name is Trips, and welcome to our third week of Watchpoint, a show where we discuss anything and everything Overwatch related. This week, we're going to be discussing the longevity of the game with the closing of beta today. It won't be reopening for about a month ish, maybe even later than that, a few weeks by a chance. Uh, joining me on this week's show once again, we have Yiska. Hey. And Volcha, our lovely editor. Hello. So, like I said, we're going to be discussing the longevity of the game from, you know, some of the stuff we see in uh, some of our other favorite games and why those games kind of stick around and why other games are so popular and why people continue to play those games. Maybe what Overwatch should take from those games. Because, as we know, Blizzard likes to take uh, things that are very successful, other mechanics and that type of stuff from other games and put, like, their own little spin on it. And it, it works most of the time. So I think an easy place to start out is your player profile progression um, because there might be some kind of background stat keep uh, scorekeeping right now in Overwatch, but for the most part, it's just, you know, like, hey, you have career, like, 300 headshots or something like that, and that's all cool and that's all fine and dandy, but some people like a player profile progression. So, like, uh, for Dota... When it, uh, I think they reset it recently when they relaunched the client. But originally for Dota 2, you had a number. Didn't really mean too much, uh, but gradually as you kept leveling up your account, you would get either, you know, a free cosmetic, but I don't expect to see that from Blizzard. That's just kind of Valve's thing because they have the infrastructure for that. But it was just this arbitrary number that kept on going and it didn't really have a cap. So. It kind of just kind of showed how long you've been playing the game in comparison to others. Whereas, like, here's the Storm, League of Legends, and I think Smite has the same type of system where you just level up and then you get to a, like, max level. And, uh, you know, you kind of stop there and you're at the top of the pack, I guess. Um, I guess, to me as a player, these sort of, like, profile progressions aren't important at all. I could not care less, but I recognize that this is a very big deal for many types of players, and for the good of the game, they should definitely develop something that's catchy and that people like to play with. I think the progression system they'll go with will probably be a profile or possibly character-based progression, and you'll unlock probably sprays through it, maybe... Maybe character portraits in game. I don't know. Um, personally, maybe like an avatar type thing, like for yeah. StarCraft Two. Yeah, like maybe like a some like a a tracer giving a thumbs up instead of something else. Um, okay. Personally, I'm not very excited about it, but I know a lot of people would be and would keep playing the game just to get those portraits and show them off and uh, you know talk about them. Hmm. Yeah, I I also am not a big fan of that. Like. You know when each achievement hit WoW and everyone was achievement hunting and it really kind of kneecapped the other activities you really wanted to do before? Yeah. I, I don't know, like, I feel like there is an element of uh, that Blizzard has to consider. Because if you have, for instance, you could think of someone tracking stats for a certain character, right? And if they do that, then it kind of goes counterintuitive or counter the way they want the game to be played, which is a lot of hero switching. So, I don't know if I'm... Uh, once you have the guy on the team that is currently gathering his Torbjörn uh, achievements with most turrets killed or most ultimates provided by turrets being killed or something. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, it has to be in a, in, implemented implemented in a way and I think it should be in the game because a lot of people want it and I'm no uh, promise with it being implemented as long as it doesn't impact the actual gameplay and you're not too bothered by it because I don't know a Torbjörn keeps dying because he wants to pick up the scraps so he can't spam uh, his armor pack or something I don't know it, it has to be somewhat in a way that um, it works for the game if it happens in a more normal mode queue, I don't even care too much. Yeah. But that sh then there shouldn't... Like, the the ranked mode achievements should be all centered around uh, doing stuff that helps you win the game. 
right? It's just something that passively keeps piling up, and yeah. I think, yeah, I guess. No, go ahead. Uh, um, I think it would be very disastrous for the game if they went for an achievement type based um, progression. Uh, the same thing happened in Team Fortress Two way back when they started releasing the uh, the new item, the new weapon packs, and everything. People would just um, achievement whore on the servers, and it was kind of mitigated because there were specific private servers that you could go to do that, and it wasn't so bad. But Blizzard isn't going to go that route, and there's as said, as stated, it's going to be in game, and it's going to be frustrating if they go that route. Yeah, but uh, I mean, if I if I can just like reel it back a little bit, jumping back to just the profile itself, like you log in and you see like from you see okay. I'm trips and I'm, you know, do I just log in and it says, Hey, how's it going? And just has a play button. Or does it say, you know, like you have your level 30, you've played 12,000 games and you know, this is you as a profile rather than specific heroes, just like your profile itself. Is there anything that you see, um, in that, like, you know, like you have, uh, achievement for 600, headshots it doesn't say specific character it just says like uh achievement for you as a player i guess the would that would that save from like the you know a thousand tracer kills and so you just spam tracer and everyone just plays tracer um i guess if there's just based uh stat tracking that'd be kind of fun to look at i usually don't care too much about that but um stat tracking in the profile would be would be beneficial and be something people would care about. And I could definitely see them adding that. I mean, they have stat tracking already that's pretty in-depth, and I don't see it being too big of a deal to add it to a profile, add totals. Yeah. The thing is, also with these general stats, there's obviously still a little bit of bias in character selection. If, For instance, you think about headshots, so you probably play, play like a tracking hero like Tracer, who has a very high f- uh, rate of fire, so he can score or she can score a lot of headshots probably yeah. won't play far uh, for that achievement but i don't know like if people want to try this hard um it's not much of an issue with me where the problem comes in then is when people start to identify with a certain character and really just want to hammer that one character in and get no progress by playing the other characters Right? So in that sense, this headshot mechanic is better because you don't feel like you're being punished for playing them too much because you still gain achievement points if that's your thing. How about... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the exact word. I don't know what Blizzard defines it by, I guess, class, maybe. But, like, defense achievements or, you know, like, uh, uh, offense achievements, like... You were behind the enemy line for five minutes as Tracer or like, you know, so you lived for X number of minutes. But then, you know, I guess that falls into the, yeah, there be people who, you know, abuse the games just to try to get that stat point. But do you think it's, do you think it'll be that big of a problem? Whereas like if it's like live, uh, you know, X minutes as an offense character. Do you think people will just like go hide in a corner somewhere just to get an achievement in like ranked play? Hmm. Probably not, but that very much depends on the type of community uh, that's going to be around Overwatch. Like you, you can't Im- imagine people doing this in CS, right? Yeah. The the community is way too competitive, and even the lower ranks get super upset if you no- don't buy the optimal weapon for that situation and everything. That's yeah. just how the community is. But in general, I think the uh, Blizzard player community, and they surely get a lot of their player base from their other IPs. Like, a majority of players who will buy Overwatch will have played a Blizzard game in the past or are mm-hmm. still currently playing one. So um, they tend to be a little more laid back, I guess. Not as super competitive, other than the StarCraft community, obviously. But Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people I know... Uh, who play Here's the Storm are just like, oh, this is my first MOBA, you know, blah, blah, and they just, like, kind of go in, and they don't really know what they're doing, but they're just trying to have a good time, whereas the people like myself who go in and are MOBA, you know, veterans, and they go in, it's like, 
these people are just kind of wandering around like they don't know what they're doing. And that doesn't really bother me in, like, quick match or normal mode. But in ranked play, I can understand that getting um, annoying, I guess, is the word I would use. Yeah. But I, I feel like even though you guys are saying, like, oh, I don't care too much about, you know, uh, it tracking how long I've been playing or, like, how many X number of Y that I have or some whatever stat like that. Those are type of things where it's it's you slowly building up your profile and you like gaining an attachment where, yeah, you know you've played for the last two, three months this game, but if it's there in your face saying like, hey, man, you've been putting a lot of time in this game. Good job. You've been getting X and Y done and, you know, or if they even had, I don't know how the hell they would, no, because they don't have a currency system, so I don't want to say quests, but... Uh, just those like small little treats that they go. Good job. Here's here's a ribbon. Yeah, it's also it's nice. it's, it's kind of nice if you think about how it works in Counter Strike. It's almost like a hidden hidden thing that most people don't use much. But there's yeah. also this stats page where you see accuracy to kills on this map, this map, best weapon, and everything in the game. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously not used much. What it, what is pretty nice is, for instance, I have a cousin who is like a semi pro in CS, and just compare my stats to him, where he has like a twenty or thirty percent higher headshot rate than I have. Like yeah. that's something that's super interesting to me. Like where he excels, and I don't know. I, I think it's it's a neat feature. Um, also, if you, I guess, if I want to sell it to Blizzard right now, don't don't make them uh, so gameplay assaulted. To get rid of that toxicity, see, I just sold yeah. it for Blizzard, and Riot, and Valve, and yeah, but um, yeah, it's just a neat little thing. Sometimes I actually care about it. Like I was pretty happy with playing with getting my uh, Brightwing to level ten in Heroes of the Storm, for instance. Thought it was pretty neat about the um, the you know the skin you get, or that you that no. you after you level. <laughs> Have to once the once yeah. you get to level ten, you have to pay yeah. ten thousand gold to unlock it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I I think it's not necessary. It shouldn't be something that you know. It's just another thing that you can wave in other players' faces. But I do like how you'll just be in a CS:GO game and you're like, oh, I am a Deagle master now. Cool. And yeah. I'm like, okay, but that doesn't mean anything to me, I guess. But it's cool that I got that achievement. I can go and look, you know, at my profile myself. It doesn't, like, announce it to the server and, like, stuff like that. So, okay. Speaking of, like, longevity in a game, usually these sorts of, you know, achievements and metrics, they usually don't mean anything after a certain amount of time because everybody's going to get them because, you know, after 300 hours, um, they're kind of triv trivial to get. So, um, in a lot of ways, uh, I guess it, yeah, it depends on what it is and what it's measuring, but in a lot of ways, they kind of don't matter in the long run. No. Um, I guess that's right. But then you think of like wow achievements and it's like, they have what they have like honorable kills, honorable kill master, honorable kill, like grandmaster. They just keep adding levels and levels and instead mm. of like, you know, get 10. Yes. Get 10 kills, get 100 kills, get 10 million kills. I suppose if yeah. they keep adding to them, yeah, they would mean something, you know. Um, I could see them adding a new level some year and uh, people scrambling to be some of the first to get that new, like, Hyper Master, um, Hanzo Killer, or whatever it might be. 100,000 headshots with an arrow, whatever mm -hmm. it could be. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree. I think with the way that this game works... You don't really want to do Hanzo Master because if I mean it's like I don't I don't see this really that often in CS:GO, but it's like people who are you know I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be the P250 Master. It's like all right, dude, we need you to buy a rifle and like get in the game. But I'm so close to getting a hundred P250 kills. Yeah. All right, well it's you know it's the tenth round. Let Let's be fucking uh, honest here. How uh, achievements work in CSGO is okay, 
Someone got an achievement. Oh, they got two achievements. Oh, shoot. It's a, it's a smurf. We're, we're doomed. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's basically how it works. Like, it's an indication that someone has a new account, and that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I, I don't think... Did they, did they announce in CSGO the achievements to the server? Uh yeah, they do. Yeah, in the chat. I don't. Yeah. I don't think that that's. I don't. Know. I don't like that. I guess because that's kind of like the boasting. I guess you know. Mm. Whereas I, I see it more as like a personal accomplishment rather than being like something you can. Who cares? It's just you know it's a personal achievement. Or on like WoW where you can link them, and then in Wrath of the Lich King it was like, hey, you want to raid this new raid that just came out yesterday? Okay, you have to link your achievement that you already completed it to mm. get in the run. And then you could edit it with some software or something. Yeah. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Um, but that has nothing to do with Overwatch. Um, but yeah. Maybe maybe you want to be picked up and they require you to have 500 turret kills. And then you can just... <laughs> or, uh, yeah, we're looking for a, we're looking for a good defenseman. Uh, the meta right now is Roadhog is number one. So you need to have at least 1,000 hook kills. Yeah. Or it could just... Po ask you to have it post to your Facebook account. <laughs> okay. That'd be terrible. No, after they, <laughs> I don't think honestly the Twitter integration and WoW thing was like that big of a deal. It was kind of dumb, but I mean, really, whatever. Dude, People, it's like, it's port we're... level stupid. Like I would, like <laughs> this the scenario where I would post this to Facebook is about the same range I would post my favorite porn to. Uh, Facebook, like, <laughs> why would I do that? <laughs> no, no I don't know, man. It's like we're uh, talking on a social media right now. Ah, Anyways, uh, there's, okay. There's a barrier yeah. there. There's like real life barrier, and then there's like uh, the game barrier. You know, I don't see this as breaking the game barrier. I'm not posting this uh, this to my Facebook after after it's done being uploaded. <laughs> My, my, like, uh, our video actually somehow leaked into our WhatsApp group. That is, like, a, a friend of mine uh, apparently secretly follows me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So, that hey, leaked that. And that was... If we're gonna, if we're gonna get into this conversation, I, I, uh... What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? I embrace my nerdism. All right, video games are... I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, I, I post on Facebook trying to get people to watch my Twitch page, man. Yeah, but I, that's so individual. Too much either. Okay. Anyways, back to uh, let's reel it in a bit. Uh, player profile progression. You know, I I think the little cookie and ribbon stuff is okay. Whereas I think we're all in agreement that the individual hero progression is not what we want to see. Um, but not in ranked. Next, yeah, not especially not in ranked because then you get weird people. Anyways, uh, ladder and. The MMR system. Now I know that they had, that maybe they had a little bit of like invisible MMR. You couldn't see it anywhere on your profile or anything like that, and it was just like a behind the you know uh, behind the scene mechanic and logarithm going on. But if they're not going to let you display how well you are doing on the individual team uh, scoreboard, which I agree with, some people don't, uh, you need to be able to rank yourself or your team on a overall like we have we are the best hollywood team we have never lost a game on hollywood or we've never lost a game on watchpoint gibraltar you know or um i guess that i guess that plays into another thing like we were just talking about should there be a top tracer player or a top roadhog player because then you're going to get the same problem where people are like, uh, I'm so close to being on top 100 Tracer. I, I, sorry, dude, I can't play anything but Tracer this game. Nah. I, I guess it depends on what we're looking for specifically. I mean, what you described sounds awful. Um, you know, top Tracer player, how can you actually measure that? Um, yeah. I'd like to see MMR straight up for teams and have it be a number and have it ranked. Just trust traditional ladder style yeah um obviously that that's like the best system but no no developer these days will give it to us right this is this is okay i'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant here i play a lot of like 
indie, um, you know, competitive games, and they all, most of them get Matchmaker wrong, and it's the reason why the game dies almost all the time. It is super, super important for a long-term game to get good, solid matchmaking and have a ladder that yeah. works. Um, and it's always overlooked, and I'm praying to God that that uh, Blizzard doesn't overlook it. I don't think they will because, uh, you know, they <laughs> they have a history of being pretty good about that. But if they if they pass on it, it's gonna kill the game. Yeah, dead game, dead game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they Blizzard had a wide variety of ranking uh, methods in their games. If you think about it, like Starcraft, Starcraft has this uh, tier system, sort of like League of Legends, and again, but isn't way. isn't Starcraft like one of the most renowned MMR systems, like still to this date? Didn't League copy them? Yeah, yeah. It was definitely a copy by League, and the system was. It also was very indicative of how good you were actually, actually were, which is also, to be fair, that's kind of like because it's a one-on-one -on -one game, was a little bit easier to rank. But um, yeah. Wait, 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 what was that analogy? A one-on-one -on -one game was a that one v one game? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. never mind. So I thought I thought you were calling League a one-on-one -on -one game, as in like yeah. super noob friendly. No, no, it's um, it's um, it is, but it's it's the Fisher Price of Dota. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, um, they they had that system, and it like people when you were a grandmaster, you you were probably one of the better people in your region, right? Yeah. So that was a pretty good system, but then ladder anxiety popped up, and people didn't want to play for some reason. Okay, so Blizzard reacted, their rank, and revamped the system, and. Okay, the next game I guess for them was Hearthstone, and it kind of makes sense to not have a super competitive level on that game. Garbage. It's what they have in Here's the Storm right now. It is garbage ranking. Yeah, for a competitive game, it's not that good. To be fair, like, yeah. is that me? Ah. Um, because the main problem is that um. um I can see it being okay for Hearthstone because there's a lot of luck involved anyway. Yeah. So why have a like an ELO number that whose purpose is to be as accurate as possible, right? But um, that doesn't make sense too much for that game. In Heroes, it's also a little bit more laid back. I could see how they could potentially come up with a similar system to. Um, to StarCraft, hopefully, right? That would be the best system yeah. that mm. they could po potentially um, have in there. And then it's also imp uh, interesting to consider what's, what's in that formula that you gain. Is it just win-loss? In, yeah. in CS, there's many people who believe that, and I'm not 100% sure if that's true, I think it's somewhat true, that the amount of MVPs you get also, or the position mm. on the scoreboard, so the overall score somehow ranks into the uh, decision if you rank up or not. So I can I can use a little bit I'm gonna intervene real fast just on that. You're saying like like people might be able to abuse it a little bit on how much they can bump themselves up. So well, for uh, I don't know if that's exactly what I meant, but that's how I took it, but I'm gonna use it as my point here is that for a little bit in Dota it was based, a uh, big part of the algorithm was based on how much damage you did. Okay. So, what people would do was that Zeus, if for those of you who do not know, Zeus is like the god of thunder in Dota. And his ultimate is you just press R and you, uh, you lightning bolt every single person on the enemy team instantly. Doesn't matter where they're at on the map. So, what people would do was they would rush the item that lets you do the mo that increases your damage on the ultimate and lets you cast it twice in a row. So uh, as long as you win that game and you just cast your ultimate as many times as possible, you're going to get a lot of MMR, like just like at least 10 to 20 more MMR. I don't know. I might be exaggerating, but it was more MMR than other people were getting just because you could do so much damage to five players every minute, uh, twice. Yeah. So, 
I mean, a, a system that's this easily ex exploitable is obviously quite stupid, right? Yeah. We, I mean, we we talked about this in a in, in the other episode about esports, how people game the system, stats pad, and to get on top of the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, like I, I'm I'm actually of the opinion that it should just be win loss, really. Like obviously, you, so? you you will have some variance in the teammates you get, but over the vast uh, of over the big. Um, amount of games you play and this is also positive for um for overwatch in that sense because most other competitive titles have games that last 40 minutes right yeah overwatch games are much much shorter which means that what's you... the longest what's the longest overwatch game you've ever had <sighs> 15 minutes for one well, no cycle, because less well, no no, no because less. they're all what they're all time based even if you get the checkpoint there's still a maximum amount of time that you can have right yeah, but then it's over time, I guess, technically, oh. you could have it for a long time, but, um, yeah, if it's, if it, if ranked was to be stopwatch mode, I guess most games would be between 15 and 20 minutes, and some were, would be much shorter if you just stomp the opponent. That's also, obviously, one good thing. Good players just can, you know, sort of like in Hearthstone, you play aggro, aggro decks and just get through the noob ranks, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the same for uh, in Overwatch. You can just stomp the opposition, and in that sense, I get a I guess a letter reset. Not every month, which would be awful, obviously, but mm -hmm. um, a little bit more frequently, like seasons, with seasons, yeah, Annual annually maybe, yeah, or quarterly even, like three months, have a season, then give out titles or something, because that was something that I thought was very fun in WoW, where you, where Gladiator gave you some sort of bragging rights, right? Depending on the I mean it gave you mounts and like yeah. Yeah, yeah some some sort of cosmetic, something cool. I don't Do know. Do you think that's something that you'd like to see in Overwatch? Like you were, you know, ranked in the top what, like one percent? So you get a crown. tag? Maybe a tag. I want a crown. <laughs> 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 For my top <12 yen. laughs> I think a tag would be cool. Because you run around and you see like a tag and you're like, oh shit, we have a, you know, Grand Master, Elite, Marshal, Lieutenant, Sergeant of the Navy, Air Force, and Marines right now. Yeah. Top yen. <laughs> <laughs> like a golden turret with a crown. I mean, you, you, you could just write that onto the crown if you really yeah. wanted. Yeah, I but, mean, or they could just let you know, let everyone upload their own tags because that worked out so well in CS, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, like the, my, my favorite interaction in that sense is always when there's like a fan and he, he gifts some knife to a, an unsuspecting pro gamer, and then, mm -hmm. then he uh, equips it for the game because he said like, "Hey, I'm going to do take this six hundred dollar knife." And I'm going to, to equip it on the next thing. And he doesn't look at the name tag, and then it's something something super offensive. Horrible, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's like, nah, yeah, but nah, text in general. I think if you have to work for some sort of, you know, reward the people in the higher um, MMRs, not even just the higher MMRs, but sort of like a, a border maybe on the... Like a a hill gap because I know in what is it in uh, Hearthstone it's like rank 20 or something to get the card back yeah which yeah. is kind of stupid in my opinion but well th there's still legends there's, there's, there's no achievement there like <laughs> you can't lose stars <laughs> uh, true yeah but there's legend card backs so I guess in that sense uh, it is kind of uh, fine in that sense and I, I could yeah. easily see that like some little indication, obviously, that's also one thing uh, we could talk about, about the future, that skins really shouldn't give any sort of competitive disadvantage or advantage. You know, you could yeah. think of a Widowmaker that's just like, on this map, this ma Widowmaker, okay, there is a little bit of an odd line, and sometimes there's a name tag too, so I don't know how much it would really hurt, but if it's, for instance, obscured the head's uh, structure or something, so you or like catch it actually, as easy. I didn't even think about that till you said it. What if there happens to be? I don't even. Do they have a winter map right now, like with snow and stuff? Uh, yeah, the Russian map, Volskaya. Oh, okay, but like you know, you have like a a white Widowmaker skin. 
yeah. and that would technically give her an advantage, right? Yeah, she would blend be. in more. I mean, uh, there is a little bit of an outline, so I don't think it's much of a problem. It's more like, um, if, for instance, if if you wanted to be very creative, especially on uh, big character models, it could become a problem if you know your little crown has a, an extra hat, hitbox or something. So, I don't know. It it shouldn't. Obviously, like th that's what, for one thing they probably also know that it shouldn't be a different hitbox. Yeah. Obviously, um, it could look like it's different, but that would already be a little bit of a problem. But then you limit yourself to reskins, right? Because if you don't want to have it in a way that your skin has some structure that, like a spike, for instance, for Roadhog or something, but so you get no hitbox. It's like yeah, that has no hitbox. When it has, uh, no, when it isn't even there on the normal skin, and then you get the the better skin or the other skin, then it has spikes, and then you shoot at it, and it doesn't hit. That would be yeah. awkward in a way, what, right? That's why I said. That's why I thought it'd be okay to have tags because they don't affect anything, but you can still make your mark on the map. You know, like you could kill somebody and then run up and tag the wall behind them as they look at their you know kill their dead body or whatever yeah um but where do you see the ladder itself i know you we've been discussing starcraft league uh dota is just strictly number if you win you get points if you lose you lose points whereas league is like um you know you get put into a bracket of like 100 people if you win and you fill up your bar full of win points then you get a best two out of three and if you make it up five ranks then you can move out of bronze into <coughs> silver and gold i don't know if that is that how that works in starcraft i honestly suck uh, at star so there's brackets i i see uh overwatch going the bracket route just because there's voting on characters and on players and map and matches and that's something that mmr and ranking doesn't really address so i think they're going to tie the two together and kind of make groups or um or communities or something from that and uh you will rank within those communities i guess uh, okay. if you think about what the purpose of an mmr is beyond bragging rights it's to um make good matches that players like yeah. to do and it tries to do with that numerically when you ask the player to vote on it directly it kind of bypasses that completely which is pretty interesting so um instead of an mmr they might just have fun you know the fun meter i get to play this guy and he has 80 fun i like to play 80 fun people you know <laughs> <laughs> something like that um if so that's i mean that's pretty exciting um i love ladders and i like ranking up ladders but i like good matches more than i like the idea of a mat of a ladder wasn't there that wasn't there a story recently of the guy who for whatever reason just ranked everyone he ever played with just like trash yeah and then it, he just like sat in queue for an hour and just <laughs> didn't get a game yeah yeah they might have a well some games have what's called a graveyard queue which you know if you're a toxic person or a cheater they throw you all Good. together and you yeah. all kind of like beat on each other and give each other yeah um, that's that's low priority in dota yeah yeah i've been there a few times just for like internet going out you'll get like disconnecting points and you'll like it'll be like you have to play five games in low priority and then mm -hmm. you like join low priority and it's just like <laughs> it's just like you're walking through hell man it's <laughs> ridiculous now you know who's uh you know the uh, dredges of the community uh, yeah and who's who's giving these name takes to the not pro player knives i guess <laughs> like yeah one thing by the way before i forget it lizards don't get the idea that this game will only have a team based ranking system like because there is obstacles to overcome. I ag fully acknowledge that with solo queue, with character switching, and a lot of toxicity coming from that. You know, oh, why don't you pick a healer in that situation? Or why are you still on Widowmaker if they're pushing our point? Why aren't you on D.Va or something? There yeah. is that factor. But still, a, ga a game cannot exist. A competitive game cannot exist only on the... Um, system of having a fully pre-made team. It doesn't work in any game. No, Every sometimes... game with a team ladder that is implemented in the game, that ladder is 
almost dead unless there's come some sort of incentive and then there is like 200 teams competing for yeah. the top 10 spots and that's it it doesn't work like i know in league uh i can't remember what season it was but they released this system to where you if your team was like the top like 16 on the ladder they put you in a tournament and then whoever like what two teams or something these are not exact numbers people but like whatever two teams won they got put in a tournament with professional teams and so there was that incentive to be like this is our shot yeah. you know what i mean but I, I see what you mean like in dota it's you know people just dink around and just be like hey we got five people together let's go into teams yeah it's They're worse. Team. It's worse with six people, right? How, how you know, yeah. how, like in in WoW, it somehow uh, worked because they made the good uh, decision to have three v three the competitive bracket. Five v five was a little bit of a different game. Would have maybe been even a, a better spectator experience, but um, it was lo like at the time, obviously, esports was a little bit different. Paying those players was m more of an obstacle, but yeah. um, not. Six getting six people organized is quite hard, I have to say. Like it's it's not your the the atmosphere is different. It's not like your wow rate, mm -hmm. right? So, I don't know my camera okay. keeps popping up. Okay, uh, we're veering off a little bit, so I'm gonna reel it back in once again. Uh, but I did mention something um, a little bit. I'm gonna skip ahead as far as show notes go. But the I know that in StarCraft. And I believe in Super Smash Brothers, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the newest game, that there is just randomly generated online tournaments. And obviously it's easier in StarCraft because you can jump in a 1v1, but there are 2v2 and 3v3 tournaments that I've seen pop up on the launcher. Um, or the client or whatever. Do you think it would be a cool thing to be like, uh, you know, we have a tournament going on right now and it can or like not even going on but like uh you know you could hop in with a team and play random weekend tournaments would that work out i see that being awesome uh, if they do that um anything to mm -hmm. get people forming teams on their own um you know you're gonna get the cues of the there are two people or three people and if they see a tournament in the back of their mind they're going to want to kind of compete in that if they're somewhat serious and they're going to want to form a team and then from there um after they form a team they can do other stuff too with the team uh anything to make people incentivized to make their own teams is excellent uh, i guess yeah. tied into that would be social options within the game because i know as far as like i'll just go back to wow syndrome it's I mean, like, I've played the game on and off for a while now, ever since Activision joined on. And it's just, yeah, I like the game. It's like to hop in every now and again, whatever. I have my own criticisms and stuff. But the reason that I stuck with the game in, like, my longest period where I only played the game, or, like, in Dota, when I only played Dota, was when I was in a team or a guild or something like that. And anything that can push people... To be like, all right, guys, it's Friday night. We're going to practice up. Uh, you know, they have their 40-hour-a-week jobs, but they like to, you know, play some competitive team-ranked uh, games and, or, like, weekend tournaments. So anything that can help boost the community and, like, increase the number of teams would be good, in my opinion. That's yeah. super important. Um, that social aspect is usually overlooked. But, yeah, that... It becomes more than the game at that point. Then it's like we are getting together as friends and we're going to accomplish something instead of, yeah. you know, I'm going to try my best on the ladder. You know, it co yeah. becomes completely different, more meaningful, and more long lasting that way. I mean, I think they should really look at all their games and especially the Battle.net clients to kind of support this idea that you are on your Battle.net clients and. The way it w works for us in CS is, okay, we, we meet some people, we like playing with them on random MM, you add yourself to each other to your friend list, and then you invite them at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Super casual, nothing bad happened. There's even the 
kind of the threat of uh, Dark therefore becoming a, uh, a scam or so, of some sort because there's items and everything. Okay, that's not in the battle client. Still, there's no interaction. I have too much with my friends on Battle.net simply because all the chat options are so suboptimal in comparison to Steam. Because Steam is just an overlay and mm -hmm. when when there's no action in your game you just uh, press your uh, key combination and you can chat and it's like it, it doesn't scroll up, it's not super annoying to scroll and then someone writes in in your game chat, and then it jumps down again. It's such. But a... isn't that? Didn't they recently change that? Because I know you know, I, I could be I could be completely wrong here. What like five six years ago, they didn't. You, if my buddy was playing StarCraft and I was playing WoW, we couldn't talk to each other. Yeah. And when they moved over to the BattleNet client and the new BattleNet stuff, at least you could whisper the guy. But uh, Steam does a much better system. But you can still pop open Windows and like you know talk to people in like a instant messenger client for Battle.net. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they they somehow go for these weird immersive types of chats. Like for instance, in Hearthstone, it's super awkward in a way how it how you access it and like there's like a so weird chat box that pops up. Yeah. The amount of times where I'm opening my Battle.net launcher and go like, wow, I have a message from five hours ago. Hey, my buddy messaged me. It was a super tense situation. I never saw that. And now he's maybe pissed at me because I didn't want to play with him. <laughs> yeah. That happens so often. Unreal. And then even, like, sometimes I'm in a game, chat with someone over Whisper, and then it tells me I still have a message, even though I was whispering back and forth with him, and it displays all the messages. Makes no sense. Like, the system is yeah. currently so flawed in so many ways. You don't want to use it. You want to outsource uh, your chat. And that's fine with your normal buddies. But... If you want to get to know people over the chat, and that happens in Overwatch yeah. Yeah, sometimes, in random queue, that you talk to people. Like, the people who talk currently in Overwatch get friendly with, with each other quite quickly simply because they enjoy the same experience, right? Giggity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, they get quite friendly with each other. Yeah. No, but, um... And that should be supported in all the clients, and it should be across games. And if someone is just playing or... You know, you know how WoW is jumping around in Iron Forge. Why, why sh should I not be able to easily shoot him a message and just say, "Hey, you want to come play Overwatch?" And that needs to be implemented in every single Blizzard IP. And I don't know mm -hmm. why they're not doing it. And they limit it to this small, stupid window where people most of the time don't pay attention to anyway. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's I feel bad. Like you, have a, you have a vendetta, but yeah, it is bad. I have in comparison. I have uh, all my gaming friends is through Steam, and we never use the Battle.net client. Even when we're in a game together, you know, we're playing StarCraft 2, 2v2s, two I'm talking to them in Steam and not through the <laughs> Battle.net client. Because at this, at this point, it's almost in, unrepairable because we're, we're not going to try out the Battle.net client at this point probably. Because we're yeah. just, we're dedicated to the Steam platform because everyone uses it. We know how to how it works, and it's great. Um if if blizzard it's like gaming came, facebook yeah if if blizzard came out with like some hot shot thing that emulated how steam worked um i Isn't don't there, think i would use it aren't they working on some type of voice over ip i don't know if it has a chat integration in it is there any word on that uh, blizzard yeah um, it know. started off as a in overwatch only thing but then they're going to put it in like here's the storm too and I, I'm guessing maybe they'll put it like it's a third-party client that maybe it'll work with WoW too. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it will be a third-party client, and um, I hope the integration gets easier than it uh, than the current Battle.net client you know uh, interface suggests. Because there's also a system sort of like this in Overwatch, where obviously you have team chat and you just talk to everyone, but then if you invite someone, you can in join the group chats sort of thing but yeah. then you can't hear the team chat and you can't talk in the team chat unless you press p go to some awkward thingy press this and then I ca you can talk in that other thing again and it's it like a weird i don't know if you ever used like xbox live party chat thing where if you invite somebody to a party you can't hear the in-game chat but you can only hear the party yeah that sounds like it's exactly like this mm -hmm. and it's it's 
it's super like it like it was quite hard to figure out how this works obviously mm -hmm. it's a better and I, that's one of the things i would expect them to definitely change come launch obviously that's yeah. such a small thing like you set one quarter onto that a week and you, it's probably mostly fixed it's not even that much coding uh, to be done but mostly design in a way i guess okay but oh, it's it's so awkward to use and are you going to are you going to get into the uh the blizzard voice over ip beta you think they're going to do waves of that <laughs> maybe i mean it's it's <laughs> It's it's sort of like the Middle Ages concept of you know, uh, not not uh, nobility, you know, like it's God given. It's it yeah. runs in your blood. So, I guess I get, I will get it. Something that I sort of thought of. Um, I might be misremembering, but in the early days of like StarCraft One, um, their lobby not lobby system. Um, group system i think it was called where you chat it was very robust and you could link up to people and talk to anybody you want and at the time it was really good and people were like wow this is this is a great chat interface and they flocked to it because it was great and it drove the mm -hmm. game what happened is um they don't have something new and great that people want to flock to and try and um you know eventually it got overshadowed because uh what, what was out at the time like um AOL Steam. was out at the time of like original BattleNet, you know, uh chat. And that was Steam. I think Steam was out around that time, but that was when Steam was garbage. Yeah. I don't think I had Steam at that time. I wouldn't know. Steam was horrible back then. It was. And everybody but, hated it. Yeah, I, it was like people would I'm pretty sure there's old Steam memes of like Steam it, poop it is. It is. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, there is. Well, hopefully Battle.net can do what Steam did and offer an experience that people will want to flock to and be like, I'm excited about trying this. This is new. Um, so far, they have nothing. They have stuff that already exists only in better platforms. Um, okay. yeah. Well, uh, after we just shit on Blizzard for a while. Um... <laughs> hey. <laughs> Speak the truth. Uh, okay. So back onto Overwatch and not voice over IPs, where do you see uh, – actually, okay, strike that from the record. Let me introduce this as our lovely Overlord Jeff came out uh, with that lovely video of his when he announced, you know, uh, the closing of the beta and that type of stuff. And we all got what we wanted. It was like Christmas morning when the words came out of his mouth. All future heroes and maps will be free DLC so all of you on the Reddit, anyone that I've talked to in person, um, you're wrong. It was a relieving feeling to know that Blizzard covers their tracks a lot. They say things like it should, it might, uh, you know, the WoW expansion, it probably will come out by this date just to give themselves that extra bit. So to have a Blizzard dev come out and say, yeah, it's all going to be free kind of solidifies that yeah it's all going to be free now they're going to need to make money so things like tags and skins and i don't know if they're going to do you know announcer packs like dota had or like uh, i doubt they'll do ui packs like dota has but um yeah so future heroes and maps they said that they didn't know at first if they were going to release new heroes they didn't know blah blah but they came out and said that they were going to they're going to be free. Should there be a limit on how many heroes they have in the game? When does it become a MOBA? When does it become too many to keep track of in one map? Because um, we're at, what, 21 right now? I guess that's a complex question, but you can be answered simply by saying, um, you know, whenever it doesn't make sense. Time will tell. Whenever like a role is being duplicated in such a way that it's stupid, I guess is the only yeah. way they can add something. Yeah. If if there becomes too many heroes, do you see a ban mechanic coming? Um, Would that work? Well, that's kind of a funny thing. Um, that would be the professional scene um, completely divorced of Blizzard and what they decide, and they will not want to be too far from what blizzard decides they won't don't want to have a game mode that's 
too far away from what Blizzard has as a vanilla, and I don't think they're going to... It would have to be pretty damn extreme for them to start pulling bans um, for tournaments. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure how much of a decision Blizzard takes in there. You know, it's yeah. more like... Okay, a tournament organizers will maybe try it, or teams will cry about not having the option or something, and then it will probably become standard also for Blizzard tournaments, right? Yeah. Well, so I mean, Blizzard, even like Jeff, he said himself, they listen to the community and they have their own ideas, but it's they set up the the base, and the community continues to build. And they put in a couple of uh, you know nails here and there to help put on that extra layer, but as much it is, as it is their game, and they're the ones doing a lot of the hard work, the community is going to be the one that takes that game and puts it up, makes it famous, makes it popular, because in reality they need us as much as we need them for their game. Yeah, I mean That's... that sounds like, you know entitlement but it's it's really not it's just honesty because you can create a game that's super fun but you need people who love the game and who are going to play the game i guess so, so if if they butt if we butt heads too much and people are like they're not listening to us blah blah and it becomes this big thing no one's going to play the game so i guess um Let's say when we say bans, we're talking about pre-match. You know, I ban this guy, and you, yeah, like you, a like a League of Legends style. Yeah. Like, let's say that if there becomes you know like forty heroes, and it's like okay, you get two bans. We could say that I guess uh, Blizzard is probably going to be very against this, just from the um, philosophical st standpoint they've had about heroes so far, which they're like it's all about the heroes. You know, they say it in like a misty eye, like wonderful Disney way. It's all yeah. about the heroes, and this mm -hmm. this runs very contrary to that because you're saying I don't want you playing that hero. That hero does not belong here. Yeah, so, but don't you think that adds some level of like strategic value? Well, yeah, but I guess it doesn't matter for the purpose of this question because Blizzard doesn't want it, and it will be if it becomes a thing the community wants. It's going to be a big thing for it will be Blizzard versus the community big time on this. <clears throat> yeah. I think in most cases it's it's sort of like a mechanic which you get into a game simply because you want to you know have a way for players to get rid of overpowered heroes before the developer can right yeah. so if if Genji turns out to just 1v6 uh team fights and everyone wants to pick the Genji uh you know that's a that's a an easy way for the community do, to deal with it the thing is and I heard a pretty good argument by Riot, and I think there's not too many supporters for that argument, but I th think it's quite sound, is that there will be people obviously in love with their characters, and if we're talking about esports, there will be people who are, will be known for known. their characters. Yeah. So if they ba you ban their signature champions, now suddenly it's a lot less fun for the viewer to watch because it's... you. you you know, you you maybe follow him a lot on his stream or something. So, for instance, if yeah, someone that's, bans, bans... that kind of that kind of goes back to the whole, yeah, you might be a Genji main, but you can't, you yeah. can't be a Genji main. Not only, at least. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, then, what if it was two bands? Okay, that would make the uh, the pool of the characters that a pro player has to play at least to five or six. Because if you only have three, then they ban two and just counter the one hero uh, you have, right? So you t take the best player and just completely mute him with very easy tools. And I don't really like that when, when you can kneecap like, the best in the game simply on yeah. mechanics that aren't done within the game, right? So, I don't know. It's... I, I think you should be... Uh, there's good arguments for both sides, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah. um, It is a strategic decision to ban them, and most of the time there is not this one star player, but you can ban out. Uh, you have to ban out more like compositions, probably. But um, it would certainly also help uh, the meta in a little bit, in a, in a way. For instance, if I ban Mercy now, wow. Everything changes. changes yeah, I right? guess that makes it a little bit like 
they would have to, I guess then, it would almost force them to create multiples of the same kit. Yeah. Because, you know, with a little bit of difference. Because, yeah, I guess, honestly, now that you brought up Mercy, that kind of makes the whole point moot. Because Mercy is almost like, uh, you have to have a Mercy. Yeah. So if they ban a Mercy, what's the point? Like, you don't, yeah. and, you and we don't want to see. Because there's only two yeah. healers. Yeah, and we don't want to see a, uh, you know, mer dude. And instead of flying, he, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this as far as, I just don't want to see doubles of the same hero. Because that's why they have bans in League. It's like, okay, you don't have Jaina. Okay, what's another character that can give shield and do a little bit of disruption? There's tons. Yeah. I I see a danger here, um, getting back to, like, if Blizzard doesn't... <clears throat> um dis want this and the com competitive t uh, community does there's going to be a big disconnect for the players this happened in team fortress 2 when uh competitive came out all of a sudden the new weapons they're releasing you couldn't use them in way in way uh, back competitive. up back when since when does tf2 have competitive mode well, it didn't have a competitive mode. It had a competitive scene. You just mean scene. like the scene blew up? Yeah. Sorry. If oh, I okay. use mode incorrectly, I meant scene. So um, what happened was um, there are weapons you couldn't use in competi in competitions. And then, yeah. you know, on servers, you had full reign. And what happened was the two communities kind of developed independent of each other. Because if you play on a server, you're going to be like, I like my force of nature. I want to use my force of nature. I want to get good at it. And you can't. You can't use it in uh, competitive at all, so you're just like that's weird. And you're and you're also like I don't want to watch it either because it's all vanilla weapons or you know specific weapons. And mm. if they do something like that, if there's the disconnect will be different. But if there starts to become a disconnect between Blizzard's it'll ideology, the community. yes, and it'll v definitely hurt uh, esports in a big way. Okay, um, maps as far as. Uh, are we going to see multiples? We already have multiples of the same game type, and we've already talked about game types before, but is is there a limit? Like uh, is, That's the same question I asked for the heroes, so I'm going to ask this for the map. Is there a limit on maps? Should there be a uh, X number of maps uh, pool that you choose from if you play ranked or whatever, everyone votes on a map, or should it be like uh, CSGO where there is X number of maps and they rotate maps out of competitive? I think it should be a rotation. I think um, StarCraft 2 has a rotation, too. Um, some maps they make in that are terrible for competition, and then they rotate out, and then they never come back in. I think that's a pretty good evolutionary system for comp for competitive. Because okay. I know for Heroes of the Storm, they just rotated out uh, Haunted Mines because everyone hated it. And so it's not in, in uh, ranked mode anymore. Like, if you picked ranked mode, you will not see Haunted Mines. Ever again. Unless yeah, unless you make a custom game, you will not see that game type. Okay. It's very bad to force bad maps on players in a mm -hmm. map pool. I, could, I don't think I'd play Team Fortress 2 as long as I did if I had to play Hydro um, in some sort of queue. I just wouldn't do mm. it. The, th the thing is, one thing I I could see where they not don't decide to that this rotation happens is that Overwatch maps tend to be... S a little more like they just seem like it's very time consuming to make it's not like a starcraft map where you get, just go into the map e editor and click a little bit yeah one person mm. yeah. so the resources for making a map and making it engaging and you know the little you know art style stuff and everything that takes a lot of work so but it's it a probably, little it's, it's kind of i mean like i have the trump card like I, we just mentioned that's confirmed a lot of like it takes a lot of time to put into maybe not as much as an overwatch because it's a first person game but it takes a decent amount of time that goes into the mechanics and the art style of uh here's the store maps and they're already yeah. switching stuff out because the community voted this map's garbage get it out of our ranked mode okay thanks see you you know in the next game yeah and That's obviously yeah it's a little bit more di it's a little bit different for overwatch because it's a more What's the word for it? It's a bigger game yeah. because the maps are more in your face. They're, and you're actually in the map rather than looking down on the map. 
Oh, they're they're like set pieces. The maps. Yeah. They're not. Um. They kind of took. The... They're not boards. They're worlds. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Like uh, Team Fortress to, or Valve, I should say, kind of took this approach to many of their maps, um, which was world-based set pieces, and it slowed down their development until they opened it up to the community to do it, and the community mm -hmm. took it off, and they ended up implementing all the good maps that they came up with. So I kind of don't see Blizzard doing that with Overwatch. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that's the reason I think that this might not happen anytime soon with the you know the rotation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's also very hard for them to right uh, right now to get to um, create maps. Obviously they're doing it, but they uh, there's still a feeling of. We were talking about it before the show where it feels like Overwatch currently is on a crossroads between a tactical shooter and a just an FPS uh, like about individual skill and a little bit about team. And depending yeah. on what route you want to go, you also have like map layouts are super huge. And some for some characters, it's obviously make or break, right? So. Yeah. If, if if the map gets super complex and you have a lot of ways to flank, obviously a Tracer and a, or a Genji are going to be better. Yeah. Obviously, if if there's a lot of vertical movement possible, um, there's certain parts of, for instance, on Hollywood where it's very open. You know, in the western part of Hollywood, where um, uh, certain characters are obviously much better than others. Um, like maps are a big part about balance. In these games, if every, if everything was close quarters, super small, some characters maybe may would be viable, obviously, or something like that. So, currently, where they don't, where where it's still hard to say how the game is ultimately going to be played. I guess. Yeah. It's, it's probably hard for them to design maps in a specific direction, and they should probably be quite creative with the. Uh, with the map, map layer. Oh, it's just just see what sticks. And I think mm. it's it's kind of interesting that currently, like top teams have a gentleman's agreement, sort of that no one takes anything but payload maps, yeah. right? Yeah, that's it's that you could pick them, but I don't think I've t I've seen. Have I watched a capture point map? I don't think I have. And Honestly, now that you say that, I don't think I've seen one in a tournament. But yeah. I, we could be wrong, but yeah. And I also think that it's because how how the thing is, it could be very anticlimactic. If you think about like the world's best team plays like a qualifier or something and just stomps them in three minutes, super Welcome possible. Like this. Yeah. Welcome to TI three. <laughs> yeah, but fifteen minute grand final, cool, nice. <laughs> but um, I mean. Um, that is not possible on payload maps, right? There's a lim there's a minimum time you play the map simply because the payload has to move, and yeah. you can push it push it faster than with uh, I think top speed is, is three guys on the payload, so um, yeah, it's it, that has to be a consideration. I think payload in that sense is already probably the more competitive, uh, competitively viable, and honestly more fun because these stomps also happen in normal games. Right, it's mm -hmm. like with the way how long it takes for you to join a game, then there's preparation time. Sometimes all the fuzz around the game is longer than the stomp you're receiving, and then it yeah. gets super unfun. And they probably should have more complex maps. And I could even see like three points uh, capture maps or four point or something. Right. Yeah. I want to see a game mode and map where ultimates are tied to map items and not charging. I want to see that as an experimental. How, how so? Well, well, like by the like you push the payload, you get over, you get your ultimate charge. No, like um, there would be a pickup on the map that you would get that would give you an ultimate, and ultimates it are decided by pickups. Super pick arbitrary. Well, mm, you know what you think about. Then, well, if it, you're like, you go ahead. If you think about um, you know old arena games, that's exactly how they played, and that's what made them great was that item control, that um, that play, that interplay between you know I got the stack and you don't. I am chasing you and I'm keeping you off the items. How are you going to react to that? That was 
super exciting. And I want to see that influence come into Overwatch in a way. They got some of the arena elements, you know, projectile we weapons and kind of fun stuff like that. I want to see uh, map items really matter. And I think Ultimates would be the way to do it. I guess my question is, is if, let's say they have on, like, uh, in the hangar, I don't, can't remember what map it is, but in the hangar, there's, like, the ship that you can go inside, mm -hmm. and you're, like, above the map. Uh, let's say that there's a ultimate pickup up there. So why would you travel up there if you're pushing the payload, you're creating a alternate objective to the main objective? So right. aren't you stunting pushing the cart by trying to control that alternate objective? It would be a tactical decision based on the team, what they value at that point. Do they value a that ultimate for that character? They would have to decide who gets the ultimate and why. Do we even get it or do we get it to deny? You know, There would be a whole bunch yeah. of reasons to get it or not get it. And that's assuming a payload map too. I mean, they, this could work, probably would work ideally in a neutral type game instead of a attack defend type game. I mean... Every single MOBA and m many other games have, have this mechanic. Like, Roshan is exactly this, right? Yeah. Baron is exactly this. Um, the, in Block and Load, they have like a, like a cube that just powers you. The Blockbuster. The Blockbuster, exactly. Yep. And uh, basically, okay, currently it's a little bit stupid because you camp for it like 40 minutes and then you win the <laughs> yeah. game based on yeah. who gets the Blockbuster. But... Um, it obviously shouldn't be like this, but it's a, certainly a, uh, an interesting thing. Um, it, would you say then, ult charge no other way, or I, mm, I because hesitate there's only to say. One. I guess you could say it charges really slow, so maybe you get one ultimate or two ultimates in a in a match, um, based on skill. You know, if you're really good at healing, maybe you get one ultimate or two. If you're exceptional at keeping your team going, um, or if you, you can kind of not finding, or if your team is not taking damage, you won't get an ultimate at all. The thing is, I, I really like this idea, but I wonder if it's already too late to do this. Because the thing is, this is such a strategical decision where you could have a lot of refinement around, you know, spawn times and how it is in Quake and how these players have these internal cooldowns where yeah. they just know, okay, I have to be there and there and there and it takes me like this much to get there. Like that's a skill that's so hard to develop and to just get to a point where it gets impressive also for people viewing it that if you split the uh, the types of maps like if you had this mode and then the normal competitive mode, then it A, it would feel underwhelming because now you feel less powerful, you don't have the ultimate as, as much. And um, it also, like, that is obviously a very, very different game than it is right now where you just farm your ultimate up and go create power plays once you have more ultimates or more important op ultimates than your op opponent's team, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, while I really like the idea, I think it might be too late in in that sense. How how would that work for Diva? What do you mean? Like she would pick it up, I guess, and she would be able to uh, throw her mech out and uh, use yeah, the bomb. Yeah, but she would be screwed once she threw her mech out because uh, well, it's... she'd be in like pistol mode, I guess. So she wouldn't be able to repack and repick up her mech. So there'd be a balanced thing as far as that goes. But that's more of a specific thing that maybe they could address within the game maybe like yeah. that mode you know diva gets some sort of concession where like when she's in uh in pilot mode she gets 20 seconds and then she can call it down maybe it's a cool down instead of a uh, ultimate a second so you're saying ultimate. Like a character specific yeah maybe uh yeah. i think they should experiment though um really experiment hard really throw some crazy stuff out there right now yeah. because you never know what you're gonna get yeah, to me, uh, 6v6 payload is not fun to watch, I guess. Um, it looks a lot of fun to play, but I don't like watching it. And um, I think I would rather play other more insane um, modes. I, pay, I played payload for, what, like seven? However long that 
TF2 had uh, Payload. I, don't yeah. know, I think Payload came out like two years after TF2 came out. I've been playing that forever, and I'm kind of sick of Payload. I'm kind of sick of Capture Point. And what pro- brought my eyes to Overwatch is it's a new type of shooter. It's a got new mechanics and new ways of looking at fighting and team would play. You, and I want to see that reflected in uh, game modes. Would you ever be able to do a uh, attack and def- like a search and destroy type of thing for Overwatch? Because I know mm-hmm. for Halo, it, obviously it's very different, but for Halo, I believe it was called Oddball. Oh, but right. But you would, it was you like... would go pick up a neutral bomb mm-hmm. and then control the bomb and get it to the other player's base and then plant it, and if it went off, you got a point. Well, maybe. I mean, they should try it if they think it would work and if like internal testing says like this is fun. Um, yeah. They should throw it out in the wild, see what happens. There might be the the way they would know is if the community starts coming up with tournaments around it, and those tournaments take off. That's that would be a good sign that they should fully support these yeah. experimental modes and really refine them. I know yeah. that I personally was really against Here's the Storm because of the fact that it's like I played Dota and League for so long, and the maps are generally similar. Yeah. And you play the same map over and over and over and over and over, and you get really good at knowing where all the like shortcuts and like where you can hop over trees and that type of stuff. And so it's like there's a lot to learn with one map, but at the same time, like you're saying, it gets boring. Whereas in Heroes of the Storm, it's like okay, one's a capture point, one's a collectathon, one's you know you capture two points and then one person can turn to a giant dragon and you know, defeat the enemy's base and stuff like that. So the variety keeps it fresh. Yeah. And I think you're correct, whereas in it's like, yeah, you want the game to be competitive, but you don't want it to get stale. Yeah. And I don't want to be playing a game mode that I've been playing most of my video game life, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean I was yeah, playing I mean, Capture, Capture Point and Taylor Capture 2. The flag has been around for since, probably longer than I've been around. I think since Unreal, uh t- Unreal the first Unreal, maybe. I yeah. might be wrong. But yeah, it's been around for a while. I don't know if I'd want to play it. Uh, play it. Capture the flag? Yeah, I want to play something new. Yeah. I, I'm not sure don't if... Don't you think they're the, like, that's like a staple in like FPS, though? Uh, I guess by default it is. I mean, a lot of things are staple in FPS. Snipers are, are staples in FPS. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, I I could see them obviously. Like, if if you're talking about these are normal game modes or something where people just hop in, have fun, sort of like I don't know Dominion and uh, League of Legends or something. Even though nobody <laughs> plays that. Wait, wait. Did you just say have fun and Dominion in the same sentence? Yeah, I don't know. But the thing is, you you get my point, right? If yeah. if there was a ranked mode with as it looks right now, it's probably going to be payload. Yeah. Because so if they had, if they had a ranked mode, and then they had a bunch of maps that they came up with, and it's like, okay, Oddball came out, and the community loves Oddball, like they just love it to death, and then they throw it into the ranked mode, and so now you do you do Oddball or payload. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'd be even separate queues, but the same. Uh, like MMR but it's it's kind of it's kind of like what he's, I, I'm getting more of what you're saying is like yeah you can be super competitive because you want everything to be balanced and you want to have that I win or you win this time and it's not all these other variables that go into it like you haven't played the map before or something but there's got to be something yeah that probably... but you're right it can't just be it can't get too crazy to be like, okay, there's this new map that completely changes everything, and if you go into ranked mode, oh, oops, you get the new map, you have no idea what you're doing, uh, so you're screwed. Not even that, that, but it's just completely different skill sets. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, different metas, too, depending on the map. Yeah. And, I, like, I personally want to see, because I, from the from the way I currently view tournaments, I think there's a lot of room for excellence in them, mm-hmm. right? And 
if you were to, you know, have a too broad of a spectrum of game modes, then people could never have the time to be really good at these, this one game mode, right? You would, it, it would very hard to develop the skill also for people to watch the action and think, wow, this is, I've never thought of this or something. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's a bit of an issue. If we're talking about normal modes, there's a lot of fun ways you could, which you could do. For instance, you could steal a little bit from, uh, from the CS thing, like gun game, where you, for instance, you would start out, what's a good fragging character, I guess, Trace or Genji, and then you get a kill or two, and then you that's, that's go into like, Genji, uh... and then you go into Farah, and then you go into, you know, and then last kill had to be like a kill with Mercy or something. Wow, that's crazy. That's like a reverse all-random deathmatch. So for Dota, what it is is uh, it preloads a little bit, and you start out as you could start out as like a support or like a late game carry or something, and you start out and you just farm, get your items, do as much as you can, and then if you die, you have the same amount of items, but it reloads a new character. Mm. And so you're saying the opposite, like a gun game, like a tier system. So you start out as everyone starts out as Tracer. You get a kill, you go to uh, Reaper. You get a kill, you go to Roadhog, Reinhardt, so on. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd never thought about that, but that would be awesome. Yeah. I don't see that being competitive, but that looks sounds oh, no, like yeah, a lot exactly. of fun. He's talking fun maps. Right. Yeah. Fun maps. That yeah. would be fun. Hmm. I'm thinking I back. I think like Halo Two, the first instance I had of a, like a fun matchup. They had like random weapons. You pick up random weapons, and you'd use weapons you would never use, like the needler, because like the needler sucks. But it was a lot of fun using like the crap weapons. And... Hey man, if you got all nine of those crystals in somebody, they're dead. Yeah, I used to actually. I used to troll people at uh, the teleports with it. I just sit there with the two needlers. They'd pop out and shoot them, and then run in the mm -hmm. teleporter. Just to be a dick. <laughs> um, but to reel it in a bit, because uh, we've been ranting for a little bit now, <laughs> do you think, so for my biggest gripe with heroes, is that you can't queue by map. So if you want to focus in on Dragonshire or uh, Cursed Hollow or something, you can't. It's just random. You can queue in as a specific hero, which won't work for Overwatch, but I know for CS... I'm tired of Dust 2. I don't want to play it. I want to work on my Mirage game. And so you can queue up as only Mirage. Do you think that would be good for... Uh, or like even in, I know, TF2, you can queue up into Payload or uh, Neutral Payload or Race Payload or something like that. I oh, that's another thing. What if they had a Race Payload? Uh, oh, the first question. I think it's a good question about the... Um the you know banning a map i guess or picking a map uh it's starcraft i it might, might have changed but you could ban certain maps you just hate to play on so maybe if they had something like that a mix of both i hate the, these two maps uh these are the maps i like it could weigh it that way there's some play within the pool and you don't have you know a 15 minute wait for one map that's not very popular um as far as a payload race map that I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know if it would work in Overwatch because of the scale, but I think they're fun in TF2. Yeah, I think they're fun in TF2 too, as well. Um, I don't, I'm trying to imagine it. It's kind of like crazy in my mind. I'm imagining, you know, just Reinhardt's encircling the thing. and then 6v6 uh, six six Reinhardt. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe they should try it, see what happens. Yeah. I don't think it would be competitive, yeah. though. Yeah, no, nah, we're not talking competitive modes. Like, mm. I'm just kind of uh, spitballing ideas here. Yeah, I, I think they should have fun modes to kind of, uh, you know, keep the f the people who play for fun uh, also engaged in the game. And then sometimes so when they... are talking the casuals, the filthy casuals. <laughs> in exactly. Yeah, for, for... Like, it's a, an interesting narrative recently in... In the gaming community, because I think a lot of people aren't just playing for fun anymore. It's also about satisfaction. Everybody wants to be a star. 
It's like a hobby, though, more than like star or satisfaction. You know, you get yeah. good. Some people have, you know, m- building sh- model ships and they get really good at building model ships. Um, you know, th- I see this as the same thing. I want to get good at at this game. Yeah. And it's a rewarding experience, like building a model ship. Nobody's sitting there, ah, oh, this glue is so much fun. Dude, I'm yeah. having so <laughs> much fun. Nobody's doing that, right? It's, it's, uh, it's about the reward you get, like the satisfaction you get from building something. And the same is with honing your skill in a video game, I guess. It's, it's yeah. the same satisfaction. And also, obviously, going up the ranks and everything. So if you could so- somehow have game modes or queue types for um, both of those communities, or I, w- I wouldn't even say that they are so strictly uh, categorized. Like, sometimes I don't feel like playing competitive, and I just, you know... Yeah, sometimes you some- need to let off some steam. Sometimes yeah. you just want to be really drunk at playing video games, and you don't want it to affect your MMR. <laughs> yeah, that's don't go in ranks when that happens. <laughs> You'll wake up the next day and be like, well, shit. That was 1K MMR. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So how about the fun stuff? If we're on the fun subject, what do you think the chances of uh, um, I'm bl- Blizzard, I don't know why I blanked on their the company name, but what do you think the chances are that Blizzard will do like holiday maps or something like that? Because they, I know they love to do it and uh, wow, they loved, they just added like uh, greetings, ha- like a happy winter veil to Hearthstone. And those are kind of easy things to add. But then again, they might just, you know, reskin Watchpoint Gibraltar or something and just add Christmas stuff everywhere. Probably, if anything, it would be like that. Just Christmas crap everywhere that's easy, you know, simple tree yeah. assets and simple um, light assets that you could just add to the map. I think it'd be cool. I like that because it's a sense of like. I know, especially in League and stuff, when you're playing the same maps, you've played a thousand times. And when it comes, you know, Halloween and you're like, ooh, there's a pumpkin over there that I've never seen before. It's enough different to be like, that's cool. I never cared about that stuff, but I can see it. Uh, Even when TF2 had whole new game modes that came out for it, I was like, eh, you know... Fuck the horseless headless horseman. I don't. I, I just want to pay play some uh, play some two fort or whatever. You know, two fort. <laughs> two fort is like the worst map, in my opinion. Yeah, it's pretty bad, but yeah, you know, that's another topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fun to All snipe right. on. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, so, away from the free stuff, paid DLC. What are you willing to pay for? Uh, if I bought the game, what I'd want to pay beyond it would be skins that I would want in the game. That would be it, I think. Um, I'm only interested in skins. That'd be it. You don't care about tags? No. Emotes? No. Emotes, Annou- dude. Announcer packs? No. Taunts? Or- maybe taunts. I, if they had taunts. That's what I meant by emotes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe an emote or two I'd buy. It depends on the emote and the price, I guess. Look at Vulture, dude. He wants he wants a, an emote like teabagging people. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. I know you have been doing this for the better part of a de- decade, haven't you? Like a teabag emote? Yeah. I don't know. You know what? Uh, what was that game? Loadout. They had a teabag emote, and uh, I yeah, never but bought. They it. also had some pretty risque skins in that game. Yeah, you could teabag with like a a nutsack hanging out of a tidy whitey in that game. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's uh, Blizzard's style no. too much. That would be a little. Oh well, no sale then. I'm sorry, Blizzard. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like skins, but a lot of people have been like, "What's the point of a skin? I can't even see it." Yeah, but none of those people who say that are Blizzard uh, customers, right? Probably. <laughs> like, They're just cranky pants is on the internet dude i I still remember i i know exactly how the progression went for my group of friends it was like hey did you did you hear world of warcraft is going to cost money a month (laughs) nobody's going to play that (laughs) dude world of warcraft just came out yeah but i can't pay because i don't have a credit card and my parents don't either oh really hmm yeah well 
I guess you can give it to me every month or something. It was a big problem in Germany. Then suddenly everyone was playing it. And then you were like, dude, did you hear? They, they introduced this retarded horse for $25. Who's yeah, going to buy that? that? Dude, I'm was riding first, through wait, Was the first Was the first horse the Celestial Steed? Yeah, I think it was. Or at least it was like... I remember it be, just being called Retarded Horse and being... <laughs> like, like, And then suddenly everyone had it. And then I'm like, oh, these people are stupid. So I'm playing League of Legends. Now I have like 100 skins. <laughs> I'm one yeah. of them, man. They got me. They won. I lost. Or, or people like CSGO became what it is right now because of the skin market like yeah oh yeah people get really invested in the stuff they buy and they don't want to tear themselves away from a game they put like 50 bucks in or uh four well, i had digits. a hard time i had a hard time peeling myself away from league to play dota because i had spent so much money in you know microtransactions and stuff mm. like that the thing is it's a different quality in uh, steam games than it is in blizzard games because in in uh, in Steam games, it, it effectively is a car currency skins, right? Oh, yeah, because you can trade it back or sell trade it. Trade them, you can bet them. You know, you you have the gamble um, aspect where you open for two euros or something a, a box, and you could potentially get like a thousand dollar item or something, right? Yeah. There's this thing. With Blizzard, you buy something, you see what you get, and yeah. That's, there's none of that uh, aspect in there. And there's, there's no trading, too. So There's also um, quantity, too, which is important. Because in those games, you can really visually define yourself differently from everybody else. Well, in a Blizzard game, what are you going to have, like, one of three Tracer skins? I'm the Tracer with this skin, you know? Oh, yeah. As yeah. well as 30% of all the other Tracers who are playing. So that yeah. uh, that's kind of a downer, uh, I guess. It's, it's also... Yeah, that's but, a, yeah. You have to think about it that the, if if you look at the skins in uh, like any game like that, like I mean, even League of Legends, their skins are pretty good. Like, there's a lot of just joke skins and cool skins, but it changes up the characters enough to like like I said, and it might be my opinion, where yeah, I've played Graves a thousand times, but to see Graves shooting a squirt gun and a towel with no shirt on and swim trunks. And then, you know, dive off a diving board when he goes back. Actually, I don't even know if that's his back animation. But anyways, mm -hmm. it's it's enough of a difference to be like, okay, yeah, I'll put five bucks into that. But you go to CSGO and you look at some of their skins for their guns and they're garbage. Just yeah. because they have 100,000 skins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, the thing is, there, there is some animation differences, right? For knives, for instance. Yeah. Not for the other weapons, but... Uh, again, it's it's a different value. Like, if I'm on a server and someone has a dragon law, I don't th think okay, the dragon law looks kind of nice. It's shit, dude. He has a car in his hand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, that's at least like one thousand dollars. Is it a su souvenir? Now it's two thousand five hundred. Does it have some s sort of stickers? Could be going to five thousand or something, de depending on the. And then obviously there's the outliers, yeah, with the uh, what they added. Um, but um, that's a different quality, and I don't think that's necessarily that'll never come to a Blizzard game. Yeah, like that's not even a discussion. That's just like a fact, I think. Yeah, but uh, so what? What do you buy them for? Not bragging rights, right? right. Or you decoration, know. I guess. Yeah, it's just it's something cool. You're not really going to impress anyone too much with them. I guess uh, League of Legends kind of tried this with uh, the Ultimate skins, which are m uh, much more pricey and, you know, a lot of... More animation and sparkly Yeah, more effects. content in, in general, like but new see, voice. When I see that, I see, like, okay, cool, you have a bunch of expendable money. When I, when I feel impressed by another person's skin, League did ruin it. Uh, when they re-released them, but when I saw, you know, like, oh shit, like in Dota, if you're if you run into a guy with like, um, like an old skin, like if he has like uh, Pudge overalls, or if he has a dragon hook, or like Ursa, the Ursa had a skin that they removed off the market, and it's like, oh shit, dude, or, uh, you know, that's an old skin, like you're an OG player, that's impressive. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if they do like legacy legacy skins, like 
let's say that they release this skin pack, this like pre-purchase skin pack, and then after a year they take those skins away. Yeah. People are gonna yep. bitch, but if you see somebody with one of those skins, you're gonna be like, oh, they're an OG player. They're probably real good. They've been playing for a long time. Yeah, I guess it could go either way. There's pluses and minuses for both. I'd love mm -hmm. if Blizzard, what they would do is they'd release 15 skin packs per character. Something crazy like that. That way there's real good customization. That would take, that would take a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, they have the resources to get kind of close, I think. And I think... Do they even... Do they even have, like, 15 skins for one character in League of Legends? Well, the thing nah, is... This, not even close. This is the thing. Um, if they were... If, there's diminishing returns. If you make 15 skins, it's not... It's, it's quality gonna, over quantity. If you release 15 skins, it's going to sell as much as, as four skins. True. Four, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, they have to, they have to stagger <laughs> that content. <laughs> 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 so so why would they it's release nice 15 snack. when they have four skins so <laughs> so uh, me as a yeah. player i want to see a whole bunch of skins but business wise it doesn't make sense for them to do it because it's going to sell just as much with just a few so you know what i mean that's the obvious jewish joke in the room which i'm not going to make based on my, the origin where i'm coming You're, from uh... but... <laughs> Wow, okay, you just made that so much worse. How many of Blizzard's foreskins do you want to buy? <laughs> um, all right, I'll be the adult in the room, and uh, let's, uh, let's hone this back in. So, paid DLC, obviously skins. Uh, I would pay for tag packs. Like, they had emoticons in Dota where you could buy, like, a bunch of emoticons where it would be, you know, like, a couple characters, like, either, like, crying so you could make fun of people or, like, you mad or stuff like that. Um, I would pay for something like that, something cheap, like, two bucks, and you get, like, ten, um, ten tags, and then you could put, like, a tag on the wall on uh, a site or something or, like, a tag on, uh, like, the payload. And it'll be like Reinhardt, and it'll be like brick wall, and you know, just like a, it's almost like a taunt. I would pay for taunts too. You know, you get uh, in Dota they, and I know in TF2 they had taunts too, uh, where you know, like you get like a a Roadhog, and it's I'm copying this from Dota exactly, but you know, he'll you kill someone and you go over their body and you press the taunt, and, you know, he shakes his butt at the ground and stuff, and then you just keep on going. It's just like a, you know, it's funny. You know, like people like to talk shit. It's part of being competitive. Not anything, you know, they're not gonna, you know, say, Hey, I hope your family dies like some people do. But it's a nice, like mm, clean shit talking. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. And still I think that's not going to fly with Blizzard. You think so? Yeah, I yeah, agree. Because with that. everything yeah. like you don't have stats because someone could say yeah, well, you did perform very well, so uh, fuck you. That like, and what's the difference then? What what? There's not not a, much of a difference in level of toxicity between, oh, uh, dude, in the other team, I guess, dude, totally, I just owned you or GG easy or something, right? And why well, haven't you performed? Like, the, the levels are almost comparable in that sense. So, I don't know. I don't think it's going to fly and. Uh, the one thing we also have to take away from uh, from the interview f uh, with uh, Jeff Kaplan is that he said they didn't consider uh, putting a scoreboard in, right? Yeah. They said okay, they said that they don't. They like the mock-ups. They like the stuff that the community is concerned about, but they're pretty strict on their scoreboard. Yeah. They, okay, kill feed is fine, but and that's obviously. Like, also, I, I don't believe him, honestly, when he says, yeah, we didn't come around to implementing a um, kill feed in an FPS game. Really, dude? That's the argument? Like, yeah, he, he was basically saying, like, oh, we planned on doing it. We just hadn't gotten around to it. Yeah, is what he, those are not an exact quote, but that's what he alluded to. Like, I, okay, that is possible that it happened. But then I really question the priorities you take in, in this game because this is a staple for FPS. If it was your design decision, A, either communicate that with the community, yeah, or yeah. 
do it right away. It's it's super important. I can't believe that they would do a like whole card on fire system and like voting system before a kill feed. Yeah, yeah. they must th th even internally they must have have done it just for basic testing purposes. You know, like a debug version. They must have had that. Like mm. it, that is something. I think gaming companies are in general a lot smarter with their decisions and when most of the time if you think a gaming company has done something something very stupid it's for different reasons right that is behind the curtain that sh maybe it should uh, take your attention away from the actual issue or something there's a lot of politics going into this and to say that they didn't come around to it like I could instruct a 16-year-old from the local college, maybe with a disability, to code a a score uh, a kill feed into this game. Like you have all the stats, you you know. An exactly. argument, an argument that I heard was, okay, if you're in the game, and Tracer throws a bomb, she sticks somebody, they run around the corner. Who knows if they died, right? So you want to know that information. But on the flip side, Tracer just killed you. You know, okay, I need to go after Tracer. What if there's two Tracers? Like, and even if you saw their name, how, how are you going to display that on a kill feed? Is it going to be, you know, Tracer killed Reaper? Is it going to be, um, you know... X Shadow 420 Lord X killed, you know, Swag Lord, or how, how are you going to display that? Well, it's there's a certain amount of abilities that are in the game for each character. You make a little icon and you put the both the names. It's not that complex, dude. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. And here's the gun. That's it. Easy as that. Maybe, maybe you also have an assist. That's super advanced stuff. Maybe we need to get a second 16-year-old for that. You're not getting a re-invite when they relaunch this. <laughs> Oops, it's gone. Nah. I'm obviously exaggerating a bit. Probably yeah. also being a little bit unfair, but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, Maybe that's also my ignorance in how the, the system works because I've never been part of such a huge complex uh, video game you know, creation. So maybe it is this hard, but it's very hard to believe. I, it yeah. might also be that he meant something else. He might have just kind of misspoke there and meant like never got around to getting it to live, you know, and like we never had the discussion about like specifically for the live implementation for the beta or something like that. Maybe there's a whole bunch of subtext and like qualifiers he didn't include in that statement that would have made a little bit yeah. more sense. Can I, um, ask you as a question so you all watched that video correct mm -hmm. that like beta whatever the free dlc video mm -hmm. maybe you know obviously i know game devs are not you know community or like some people aren't that well spoken did you notice that he said um every single other word um i totally um noticed that because i do that myself all the time mm -hmm. i don't know it just bothered me and i thought i'd bring it up the thing is, yeah, it bothers, bothers you, but oftentimes people who don't do that also have, you have this feel, okay, he's a professional talker. Now, mm -hmm. what kind of bullshit is he selling me here, right? He's yeah, I guess it could, be, it could be signals of him thinking on the fly or like... There was actually... You, a... Oh, wait, are you saying the other way around? Are you saying like he's talking for real, not off of a script? So yeah, that's yeah. Why he's talk... he's... yeah, yeah, he's talking... Like, he's not the person you hire if you want to... Uh, you know, bullshit someone. He's not, he's not a yeah. friggin' car salesman, that's for sure. Like, yeah. that, that's the thing, I guess. He's not a trained professional in, in the art of speaking, I guess, where yeah. he wants to, you know, persuade you in any way. But he he's obviously very smart about w what they are willing to uh, inform us about. But I mean, to me, he seems super... I like him. He's cool. His beard is, like, he should keep that. You should keep it. Yeah, there was a distinct <laughs> difference between a couple yeah. interviews. Like the I've been up all night working on this shit. Like Do you know what his game attack is, by the way? Yeah, we went over this. And I actually think I heard it in another podcast. Okay. His his old uh like 
what was it wow days or something back uh, back a while EverQuest. ago was it EverQuest? Yeah, he was one of the players in EverQuest, and then his name was Tig, to... his name was like Tiggle. Tiggle, yeah. And so and so, it's not the it's not the whole big old titties backwards. Yeah. It's the it's just the Tiggle, so it's big old. Yeah, he, no, he used to be uh, called Tig Tiggle Biggies. Not, yeah, Bit, Bitties. Bitties, Bitties, yeah. I think that's the story. I'm not 100 percent sure if that's ever been confirmed, but I mean, what he was like 20 around that time, yeah. so yeah. That's some that's some legit gamer cred right there. I mean, if you yeah, man, that's, that's like a gamer level. <laughs> yeah, they were all in EverQuest, I think, as far as I remember. And then they became key fe- uh, figures in the WoW development. And I think it was him and a couple of other guys that, uh, who either still work at Blizzard or did at some point. I mean, yeah. I hope Jeff still works at Blizzard. Yeah, yeah, obviously he does. But <laughs> that was a stupid joke. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, enough shitting on Jeff Kaplan. Um, okay, so we're getting towards the end of the discussion here. What what do you see in this game that we haven't mentioned already that you would like to pull from one of your other favorite games or games that you played for extended periods of time? Why did you play them so long? What made you stick to them? What, what uh, gave you a sense of community? So I know something that they tried to put into Dota was guilds. Now, that makes no sense in a MOBA whatsoever because you can't go into a MOBA game with 30 people. But they made guilds just so that they could have a sense of community. Um, What would they do if... There's a long shot here. What would they do if they made a Battle.net guild system so that your guild in WoW could be the same group of people in the same group chat in Heroes of the Storm, in Overwatch, in StarCraft. Well, you could do it, but not call it guilds. I think in uh, Steam they're called groups. So just call yeah. them groups and um, you, you got it right there, I guess. Yeah. But uh, why would I use that, though, over Steam's groups, I guess, is the question. Because people who play WoW, uh, you know... I don't know, man. They're on WoW all the time. WoW was like, honestly, for a long time, WoW was like a playable chat room. Yeah, I know hmm. people that just like get on WoW, just put it on a different monitor and do their work. It was basically Club Penguin. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. And Dude. so if you can if you can play Overwatch and still talk to people that you don't necessarily want to add to your friends list, or you know, add fifty people to your friends list. But you still want to talk to people uh, in a big group format? Why not? Yeah, yeah, why not? The thing is that that's that's again to the point, you know, of uh, having a their, better communication yeah, UI and everything. Battle net thing, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, that's that's obviously a, a great consideration. Like the elements, if we, you know, sort of like also to summarize what we said. You want to have your community interaction. You, you, your friends keep you in this game, right? Yeah. Then the achievements, like the time you spend, like the feeling that if I now stop playing this game, I'm abandoning something. Be it skill, be it some sort of achievements, uh, skins maybe, yeah. Money just invested in it. Okay. Exactly. And then there's also uh, what what keeps me stuck uh, uh, with games is the esports community. And we we had a lengthy th- discussion how uh, how this should be working. Um, I'm actually going to link it right onto Trip's face. So if you're <laughs> watching this right now, it's just going all over your face, like like yeah, like exactly that. You guys are making horrible sex jokes this uh, <laughs> this podcast. Probably. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you have a dirty <laughs> mind. <laughs> And um, not, nah, but uh, that, that's personally what keeps me interested in the game. That a healthy community, obviously. Yeah. Like I don't even mind if it's too toxic or anything. It's really what just. About, what about a global chat? Remember when they put that in WoW? Dude, these discussions. I, I'm sure, like I, when I'm 40, you know, there's some some sort of like I don't know lymphoma being diagno- diagnosed, and the doctor is like, yeah. <laughs> what? <that's- laughs> Uh, Yiska, I have to tell you, that's it's it's caused by trade chat, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you got canceled on trade chat. 
<laughs> it's scientifically proven, like, that dude trade shit. <laughs> the worst experience ever in WoW. And it's worse because I started out on an RP server, and there was constantly oh, this, God. this uh, RP guys who obviously, they picked the server because they are RPing, and then there's some script kitty dude or something, like, like going... That was like you walk into like the wrong end of Stormwind and there's like 40 dudes in an empty house like acting out a play. And you're like, oh god. Yeah. That's actually fun. It's it's less fun if you fly over uh, like a lake and there's two night elves. Females. <laughs> this, is going, this is going in the wrong direction here. <laughs> Dude, I love being a rogue and then just, you know, whispering. Dude, they are, <laughs> they're cybering here. <laughs> <laughs> Happened so often on our P service, dude. I can't. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but yeah, anything else? Anything you want to bring over from other games? Yeah. That would make you stick within uh, Overwatch itself? Yeah. Steam chat. <laughs> <laughs> Integrated Steam yeah. chat. Blizzard well, announces, oh yeah, we're just gonna, we're working with Steam and uh, we're just gonna merge the friends lists. Yeah. Bam. I'm there forever, you know. <laughs> not just well, take lessons from Steam, really, right? It's not that hard. Like, I don't think there's any patent a pa patent where you have uh, you can't have overlay chat or something, which yeah. makes it much easier no. to coordinate. So why not just do it? Why, why does it have to be implemented in your in an awkward way just so it doesn't break your immersion? I don't know. Because Blizzard, like me, man, you gotta be different. I think they really like their own making their own stuff, you know. It's kind of fun yeah. for them. They like look at something they're like, "Oh, that's fun." And they're like, "I want to make the fun thing too." And they just kind of do it that way and go from there. So they see chat things. And so what they should do is they should look at Steam and be like, "Boy, that must be fun to develop. Let's have some fun developing that." Cuz uh I think they need that. <laughs> uh all right. Uh so I the very last the very last topic uh, that I want to bring up is balance patches and the meta itself. So the thing is, is that, yes, in League, um, these are games that we keep bringing up, but in League, there are a set number of champions that are viable. In Heroes, same thing. There are a set number of champions that are viable, and the others are considered balanced, but are just like, pick them in very rare situations which I don't like whereas in Dota there is a huge pool of champions that are just played I mean like a lot of them are banned and a lot of them are picked and yes there is always going to be a worst just because of you know listing systems and that's how they do it but how often do you feel like the game's going to get balanced how uh, you know are they just going to be like here's this you know season's balancing changes and figure out the meta for this season and have fun or you think they're gonna do like a more MOBA style patches every couple months personally I hope what they do is they patch very often um, something that drove me away from the Starcraft 2 stuff was the meta in Starcraft 2 was would be stale for a very very long time before they would get along to making an adjustment a very small mm -hmm. adjustment and then it would kind of be the same and then keep going that way that drives me away from a game it drives me nuts i don't like to feel like i'm playing the same game over and over and over again each match like a robot i don't like chess because there's set openings and moves that um you got to adhere to for the best optimal you know chance of winning you know it's very i don't like robotic play like that so if they're if they're working hard of um, at mixing up the meta often, I am a very happy player. If uh, if I'm looking forward to this biweekly's uh, patch notes, like with anticipation, what are they going to change? What are they going to change? I can't wait to look at the changes, and I can't wait to go in my head and try to figure out what that means, and then go into the game and implement my thoughts. That yeah. if that's happening often in a game, I am super happy, and I'm going to stick around for a long time. But that's just me personally. There's a lot of people that really do like rote stuff that they really like to get very specific and very good at that specific play. And I recognize that that's it's a personal thing for me personally. I like very mixed up metas. 
Are fighting games balanced too much? Um, it depends Anybody on the game. <laughs> I mean, besides like Street Fighter, where they come out with you know like Ultra Street Fighter and they change yeah. up some of the characters. When it's just like a regular game, I don't think it's it's well, balanced so much, so you can like master it. Almost. Okay, I, I can give you an example. The Brawlhalla game, I think we talked about it off camera. I um, did. I did check that out, by the way. They seem to drop balance changes every two weeks or so, and it does mix things up quite a bit, and it does make it very exciting. And that's a pretty competitive brawl uh, fighting game. Um, as far as in general, usually fighting games are for consoles, and uh, consoles don't really get balances. They just kind of come out what they are, and then yeah. that's what it is. Just because I've seen, you know, like Melee. Melee's been out for, what, 10, 15 years now, maybe? And it's just the scene has stayed roughly the same, but, you know, there's newcomers that come up and master new uh, characters and stuff like that. That's a very different because it's not a team-based game. But it's just kind of like, do you let it sit and uh, you know, develop and people develop their own strategies or do you kind of just like okay, it's been six months, let's roll the dice and see who's powerful this time. Oh, I wouldn't say roll the dice. I'd say like you would measure it upon like metrics and the uh, community community's feedback i guess um yeah and then try to make adjustments there that way there's like the goal would be there'd be as much interplay in in how you play the game as possible instead of you know pick this character play it this way forever and that's optimal you know uh you want to like truncate that curve it make more inroads through that and uh you know if if uh, every single match um, that um, Symmetra's in, that is, she wins like eighty percent or whatever that metric was before, that's that should be a sign of a problem, and that's what you use to balance by. Yeah, okay. personally, like from a purist uh, point of view, obviously, like I remember still a, a, one of the top players in WoW uh, at the time uh, when I was still writing said, "You would see more insane plays." if Blizzard just gave us two months with the same patch, right? So if things don't, didn't con uh, change the entire time, then you would see a deeper meta, meta uh, develop, right? Because currently, like in WoW, it was the way, okay, which class is overpowered? Which player can already play this class? Okay, it's my yeah. time now, right? Now I can shine, and the others either don't adapt where there was a lot of pride in their their own classes and they, they didn't want to throw away their skill and they often like some of the best players never won a tournament simply because they stick to the underpowered character at the time because they felt okay that's a rewarding for me and b that's just my my stick sh stick yeah. yeah so it 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 definitely shapes the competitive community depending what your d development cycle or your update cycle is because yeah. if you do it like in league in league most of the time the there's patches and then there's patch teams right they 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 are very good for a certain period of time and then they disappear and the real yeah. star player teams are those who are constantly able to adapt yeah, and I really criticize top teams in WoW for this too, because seemingly no one, despite two teams who were then at the end of the day, if you summarize uh, the um, achievements they had, the most successful teams, is that they constantly adapted. So you should kind of like by b balancing constantly, also for the sake of novelty. Like that's one thing I really hated when uh, when Riot came out and said. Yeah, we we are updating the game because it's balanced, not because we have to. It's not for the sake of uh, novelty, really, dude. Really, like that's just disingenuous. Really, yeah, it's yeah. not intellectually honest to say that you're updating your game not to provide new content or to mix up the meta because that's what attracts most people. I think most people are on uh, on the vulture train who don't get much out of you know a stale meta where people then develop new stuff but we have seen that incredible stuff can spawn from this and uh, starcraft one is the best um 
example for this, right? The, mm -hmm. the game was played for a couple of months this way, then they find out some hidden mechanic and it switches up everything. Or some well, yeah, guy could... just overcomes the obstacle of, you know, the best currently. that It's unbeatable and then he comes and then it's all the more impressive, right? It's the same thing in like the, I mean, the speedrunning community. It's like, you know, you get these people who have the world record and it's like nobody can touch them and then some guy who's bored and just, you know, sits and finds a bug by running into a wall for six hours completely changes it. That's th the new run. I, and, think... and I know that's, that's hard to equate to something like a competitive game, but it's like if you get bored enough and if you can run around a map by yourself as Junkrat and you find a new route to, like, speed around and capture a sick, like a point or something like that or, like, a new position for your Bastion that's not in the meta or like you know like raising like a bastion up with a may and putting them on like two maze and putting them on the top of a tower or something like that it's if you shake it up too often it's going to become this like run you gotta like okay they got a new patch hurry up change like we don't have enough time we gotta continuously keep learning and learning and learning and learning and you don't get to sit on anything and like become you know a master of it I think we got a, a example of this right now uh, on the Reddit. There was a video of I think it was a competitive match where everybody in the beginning went Hanzo and Scatter Arrow the other team. That was brand new, out of the box thinking, out of meta, and it had um, a good result. Now that's awesome. The breakout is very exciting, and it's wow. You know, we all watched the video. Our minds are blown. But what happens now? Is that how we all open matches now in competitive? Do we all go Hanzo for the first five seconds, scatter arrow, and then switch? Um, yeah. I mean, shitty. you know, the breakout is exciting, but what has to happen is there has to be... An, <laughs> it has to be switching up. It can't be that's how you play the game for the next two years, you know, open for... Oh, switch to Hanzo for the first five seconds of the game. Shoot, shoot, scatter arrows, then switch to mains. You know that's that's caca. I don't want that. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you have a game where classes are close enough, like not totally balanced. I can acknowledge that that it's impossible probably to achieve, but depending on the skill set your team has, and for instance, your team is very aggressive, for one, yeah, that it is possible to overcome meta picks. For instance, let's say currently with Mercy and Lucio being the staple supports, what if suddenly um, Zenyatta and w what we have seen from Euro teams, and the reason they don't play uh, Mercy is because they feel like they have the mechanically skilled players to outplay at some point, in some way. They don't, right? So they play to their own strength, and then... Um, if different styles match up, that's where it gets very interesting, yeah? So we, I guess what, what I'm saying in complicated ways is we want a game where there's more than one correct selection on the meta based on the strength of your team. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like to have the... It's a mixture of the two. It's a balance. It's the, yes, I want patches to come out to shake up the box a little bit, but I also would like to have, you know, like a rock, paper, scissors, like, okay, not like both teams go Hanzo and it's whoever can scatter shot the other team down fast enough. It's like the, oh, they they went with the Hanzo opening. So we're going to Reinhardt and shield all of us and let them waste their time. And they go, oh, okay, you know, we're going to send out one Hanzo. They think that we all went Hanzo. So they're going to go Reinhardt, but really we're all going to go Tracer. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And it's like, if, if people get crapped on by the Hanzo opening enough and there's no balance patch to change this, they're gonna find a way to beat it. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Possibly. Well, what if they don't? Let's just say... Because that happens a lot in games and that's how metas sort of stagnate. Sort of that's how they get stuck and how you go down the trail, the, the trail and then all of a sudden like, it's part of the trail and then the meta switches somewhere else, but it's always going to uh, include that opening. I guess if they make patches to stop that from happening would be the ideal. You know, I don't want that to be part of the game. I acknowledge that this exists in other games, and I certainly can 
think that this could be possible for Overwatch. Well, but like, the way um... I understand the game right now is it's way too complex to never find a solution in, uh, you know, to break up the meta. Even right now, like, people think, okay, they have started doing tier lists and everything, right? So yeah. they think, okay, the way Hubris plays is the only way you can play right now, which is probably not true. Because no. the meta is built around the strengths of those particular players. And maybe there is a little bit of a bias in st character strengths to towards that uh, composition. But what if you there, there comes out this crazy Widow player that just one-shots Farah every time headshot? But yeah. what if there is someone that has this crazy aim, right? Or, I don't know, like... You take a completely different approach and just say, okay, we don't want to waste so much time. Maybe we lose uh, by um, on defense, and that's fine. That's where um, Mercy is the uh, most powerful. But then we we take it back on the other side and solve the problem this way, right? So that there, there's a lot of complexity I, I'm seeing in, uh, in Overwatch in these strat uh, strategical decisions, where I'm I feel it there will be very hard to over a longer period of time, have a stale meta because the top teams will realize that it it all builds around currently the best players being these players who already can play the strong characters um, right now. Right. So the best players in the game probably are right now. Tailspin, uh, Siegel is very good on Farah, and you could argue that um, they should probably uh, experiment a little bit more around Genji because Siegel is such a good Genji player. Yeah. And but the thing is, like calling the meta stale right now, for instance, which I've seen people say is so stupid for three weeks, right? Because it's been a month of beta. Yeah. yeah there's not even like a meta. Know, not even like. 10, I mean, there is a meta. The a meta is like a bigger word than that, but yeah. Yeah. I, I think don't know. the the main limiter is the amount of people playing right now. That too, yeah. Yeah, once they open the floodgates and... I don't know. Things are going to change so much. People need to stop making generalizations and more so, like, just stick to this is what I think rather than this is. Yeah. yeah. That's typical yeah. of, though, of, like, all game communities. Yeah. Okay. Um, any f further... Thoughts on balance patches before we wrap up? I guess I have a quick one. Uh, it's just an observation of myself. that When I look at the games I sink over like 300 hours in, it's either a game that has a good ladder or it has dedicated servers. And um, I see Overwatch not having one of those, so it better have a, a the other one. There's not a, there's not a Blizzard game that has... Um, like You're saying like player-run servers, like how right. Counter-Strike has? Yeah. Or like TF2? Yeah, it's that's not going to have that. That's like a Valve thing. What other game? I mean, I guess Battlefield has that. Battlefield. Um, un, not Unreal. Yeah, Unreal. Unreal had that. Um, I think I mean, Quake but did Blizzard's too. not huge on mods and stuff like that anyways. On mods? Yeah, mods they had. I, I That's not fair to say. Like Warcraft 3 and everything... You know, I guess StarCraft. Yeah, I'm completely wrong. I guess I blanked on the RTS stuff. Yeah, that's I'm completely I, wrong. I guess what I'm saying is, since they're not going to have this thing and this other thing is important to me, let's make sure this other thing is important. Definitely, is well, yeah. well developed. Yeah, which is the latter. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have faith in their esports thing because it seems like they're really trying to go esports with all the. New games, the new hire, the ESPN guy, and stuff like that. Yep. Have faith. Don't uh. Don't be pessimistic. Not you, but just people in the community. But uh, yeah. All right. That's episode three. We're all good. Okay. Let's go ahead and wrap up. So, um. For everything that we talked about today, guys, we like to have some discussion going in the comments or uh, when we post this on the subreddit, in the comments, even, you know, if you have to, anything to say, if you think, you know, we're just all ugly and you don't like us, let us know. It's cool. You know, just getting people talking is uh, what we're aiming for. We're trying to 
talk about the game that we uh, hope is very good. And we like to uh, start discussions, whether they be positive or negative, because if they're negative, it's more fun. Yeah. Also, subscribe if you like the content you're watching. <laughs> like, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, yeah. There you go. What's happening? The, the, what is it? What are, uh, shameless self-promotion. There you go. Follow us on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, My Yearbook, Facebook, uh, MySpace, Live Journal. I feel like, oh. And then I got a Goodreads account too. <laughs> Goodreads. <laughs> Add me on AOL Instant Messenger. Yep. Add me on Steam, the su superior platform. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, as far as myself, guys. I have been playing on Twitch a wonderful little game called uh, The Mean Greens Plastic Warfare. Just came out on Tuesday. It's very reminiscent of the old Army Men games for like the PlayStation era, like Dreamcast era. It's nothing innovative. It's nothing, you know, going to become an eSports and stuff like that. But it's, it's a fun little game that I'm playing on my Twitch over on twitch.tv slash trips, just T-R-Y-P-P-S. And I want to do a little review or compilation type of thing on my YouTube. And that is Trips Dota. And it is the same for my Twitter. And if you follow my Twitter, you'll know when I go live on Twitch. Jessica, you got anything uh, going on? Because, I mean, it's not like you're playing beta anymore. True, yeah. That was... Like I'm, I was making, uh, trying to start making these beta impression videos. Then the beta, like I'm uploading, I'm like, okay, what's what's new on the subreddit? Wow, dude! <laughs> 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 like the yeah, series so, is uh, now. I, the, like, the, I'm gonna start making uh, beta diaries. Uh, they're closing <laughs> down the beta. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Dear Maybe. diary, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I guess I still have some impressions on some characters, uh, which I want to fill in. Maybe I'm going to get around to doing it on Saturday. Let's see. But other than that, um, follow me on Twitter, I guess, uh, at Yiska Out. And Volcho, you got any? How's Brawlhalla going? Brawlhalla's going good. I don't have any specific content for that right now, um, but I might start streaming it soon. What I do have, though, is some... Um, some videos on a collectible card game that I play that is not Hearthstone. It's a you know smaller indie company and it's terribly nerdy. So if you're feeling like a super nerd, you know check out my videos on these these decks I got. Um, and I will put, I guess I'll put my YouTube link in the description of this video because I didn't think to put it up there before this video. All I got is my Twitch up there. So, yeah, that's where you go Good. if you want to feel like a nerd. That's it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slip in just because I forgot something real fast. Uh, so, my Twitch is generally newer, uh, less known, and if you do like the Plastic Warfare, I am giving away a copy. So, if you do come over and check me out, uh, I don't know when this is going out, but if you do come over and check me out, I'm giving away a copy once I hit my... Uh, milestone of you know a million followers i'm joking a hundred followers because it's new <laughs> but other than that i think we're good i think uh that's it wrapped up episode three b <laughs> <laughs> you'll never know all right guys uh everyone from everyone here at Watchpoint, we hope to see you on the next cast and uh let us know how we're doing but we'll, until then, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.